Inertia doesn't exist in the heliocentric paradigm, nor does rational thought or critical thinking. Heliocentrism relies strictly on ignoring reality while blindly disseminating fantastical theories using the observations which spawned the theories as proof of their validity. For example, Sir Newton observed that apples tend to fall towards the ground and explained this was probably due to gravity. Um, and this very well may be a plausible explanation, or gravity well, very well may not be a plausible explanation of this very keen and astute observation of Newton of what goes up must come down. It's critical to point out that the fact that apples do not float up from trees is not proof that gravity is a true theory. It is only proof that the observation, what goes up must come down, is an accurate observation here on Earth. Now, take a look at these uh, following few images of red curved lines, and they might seem a bit odd to you. I'll leave it for you to sort of guess at what they might represent for a moment, and it will be all revealed, of course, over the course of the video. However, just keep these red lines in mind as best as you can for the next couple of minutes. I should mention that when people consider things like orbital patterns, we think of perfect concentric circles or spirals, or in many cases have never given orbital patterns much thought whatsoever, and that apparently includes all physicists and astronomers with just about everyone else with them. Uh, it seems to me that common sense has been left out of our journey towards physical models of our universe, and certain presumptions ignore what is theoretically possible or not, and are completely void of any viable relation to the truth in physical reality. This video is intended to critically examine the heliocentric model and many of its variations during the evolution of the lie, and the problems that I've found inherently in all of the systems, theoretical systems, which were totally overlooked by all theoretical physicists throughout history, starting with Copernicus, arguably, right through to this day, and including the universe governed by Einstein's relativity. Now, I submit that inertia has been completely left out of the theoretical systems involving a globe Earth and heliocentricity, as well as electricity being left out, and both these inertia and electro electromagnetism, more specifically, have been totally ignored in all of the known natural physical forces, including, again, inertia, electromagnetism, and often common sense physics, just to name a few. I might agree with Newton in terms of his observation related to falling apples, but beyond that observation is where he and I differ wildly. It's high time that our scientific community understand the laughable impossibility, which is the heliocentric model that must break the laws of physics to maintain its viable status, even if the Earth was a globe spinning around in space. The animations that you're going to view through the course of this video are not intended to be accurate in the sense of perfect two-scale representations of our galactic, centric, heliocentric, spherical Earth infinite space model of the universe we've all been taught as factual since we were just small, gullible children. You'll notice how the red lines that you saw in the beginning represented the path. A body in orbit round another moving body are nothing akin to a circle, and gravity absolutely does not account for the patterns found by objects which orbit other larger moving objects which are traveling much faster than the smaller satellite objects originally in question there. Such, such objects defy all laws of physics, including inertia, if you consider the spinning globe model, the spinning Earth going round the Sun, going round the galactic center, wherein we should experience wildly different inertial effects every day or every year, depending on our position on the Earth and its coincidental trajectory around the Sun relative to our angular velocity, 
compounded by the Sun's much faster trajectory around the galactic center, none of which actually exists in reality, I should point out. So you'll notice that in the stationary heliocentric model with the Moon orbiting around the Earth, the Earth orbiting around the sun in a perfect circle appears to make a lot of sense until you add the moon into the mix. Round and round the earth goes, and likewise the moon goes round and round the earth. This might appear to make some sense, however, it does not. Even in the Newtonian view of the solar system where the sun was always stationary, the problem I'm ultimately pointing to in this documentary is still apparent, even in the stationary sun model. When you consider that the moon is supposedly a satellite of the Earth, which is a moving system, the Earth traveling much faster than the moon is supposedly traveling. The problem I have with all of this will be apparent to you by the end of this video, I hope. If you do not get it then, then I suggest you watch it again, because it is a rather simple concept, but it is sort of hard to explain. I can summarize the entire thing for you and state that the world we dwell upon is indeed flat and stationary, and the celestial bodies all orbit the magnetic center, which is fixed upon our North Pole, or the center of the map of the world, not the top of the globe. Gravity cannot account for all of this. If you notice the red line path around this example, the moon is not traveling around the Earth. It's moving very slowly through space at times and moving very quickly through space at other times. The curved lines here represent the speed of the moon in orbit, where the tighter curves represent the moon moving much more slowly through space, while the longer arched curves represent the moon hauling ass through space essentially catching up with and surpassing the Earth, somehow traveling way faster than the Earth, to swing around in front of it, changing its direction all the while, only to basically stand still in space as the Earth travels past the Moon in order to keep its apparent, you know, perfect circle around the Earth in its non-existing orbit only to repeat the whole process again, where the moon somehow accelerates to many times the velocity of the Earth, which is physically impossible, and again surpasses the Earth in speed and changes direction to swing in front of the Earth's path around the sun, and basically stands still in space while the Earth goes past the sun to keep this orbital motion going in the non-existing, fantastical, heliocentric model where the sun is stationary. Now again, I know we're sort of traveling back in time to Newton here, but I I'm showing you this to prove a point. This is one of the reasons I have such a total lack of respect for any model that involves a spinning globe Earth, which will become apparent in the next section as we explore the galactic model, where the Earth is orbiting the Sun, and the Sun is orbiting a fixed position in the center of the galaxy. However, that fixed position is also hauling ass through space faster than any of it, but we won't even get into that problem, because there's tons of problems involved with that galactic motion, as this amount of delving into the nonsensical isn't even necessary once you've debunked the basis for, or premise of, the heliocentric model in general. Now, isn't it? It's not necessary. So, in, in this little animation, there's the perfect galactic center with the perfect Earth orbit animation. So, just assuming for a moment that the heliocentric model is correct, where the Sun is orbiting around the galactic center and the Earth is orbiting around the Sun, it would look something like this, just as a graphic representation of the working model. It appears to make sense on the surface at first glance, but in this example, we'll ignore the moon altogether. Um, there are some definite problems with inertia and how the Earth traveling about 10 times more slowly than the sun, somehow looping around the sun, moving in the opposite direction, and then somehow going past the sun in its orbital path, traveling many times faster than the sun to do so, and then avoids crashing into the sun very frequently. I should point out, this entire video is intended to show you proof that the heliocentric model of the universe is simply impossible, illogical, 
It defies all physical laws and realistic concepts you could possibly imagine. While the flat stationary plane Earth involves none of these contradictions and problems whatsoever. <clears throat> this little animation is intended to show you what should happen if the Earth orbiting the Sun actually came around the Sun due to orbital velocity, then swung around the Sun, tries to catch up to the Sun, and oh, well, not so pretty there, is it? Now let's give the Earth another go at it, seeing how the Sun is no longer stationary and the gravity path of the Earth should take around the Sun, instead of magically accelerating many times faster than the Sun to loop back around in front of it, slow down to almost a stop, then allow the Sun to pass by it, then accelerate again to many times faster than the Sun to start the whole process over again, much like the Moon did in the uh, heliocentric model where the Sun was stationary. It's the same sort of problem we have here. If you consider all of this rationally, you'll certainly realize that gravity and heliocentrism are an outdated, disproven model of the universe, as their constant premises involve the sun being stationary at first, and even then, the moon orbiting the mobile Earth had the exact same problem I'm pointing to here, which the problem with the moon is compounded even more so when you consider that the sun is also moving, but we won't even get into that. Uh, gravity simply cannot account for the satellite bodies orbiting much larger, faster, other satellite bodies of a greater order of magnitude it simply cannot occur in the physical reality that we dwell in. The simple fact that the oceans of the Earth possess exactly zero degrees of curvature make this entire video unnecessary, but to disprove Santa Claus, we must also disprove his beard and every last reindeer, including Rudolph along with his red nose as well. Properly working heliocentric model with the Earth around the Sun, the Sun around the galactic center, seems to work very nicely and neatly. Unless I knew better, I'd say it was a decent little animation of our world around the Sun, assuming the galactic plane is in alignment with the solar plane. It's all nice and neat and perfect and explains all sorts of things, however fails to account for the fact that our view of the constellations, many light years in opposite directions, many of which contain galaxies hurling through space in opposite directions, but besides the point, I'm sort of digressing, isn't it neat to watch the globe Earth rotate around the sun so nicely? Now, one thing I've thought about is, uh, I've never understood why aren't any of the planets here in our solar system, or us here on Earth, affected by the ever-powerful, yet ever-weak force of gravity emanating from the galactic center, which is theorized to be a giant black hole or a supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy, which doesn't exist. Uh, forgive me if I'm missing something here, but a warp in so-called space-time, which is powerful enough to compel a body as massive as the sun in the false heliocentric model, a body that massive to perpetually fall around in circles at mind-boggling speeds around this galactic center, yet this force has a zero effect on our planet, or our moon, planet in quotes, of course. I'm sorry, but a warp in space-time that massive and powerful would most certainly have some effect on the bodies in our solar system, wouldn't it? And the fact that we cannot 